Hello again, we are going to see the final product. And on this case we have chosen for you a remote control FSK demodulator and decoder. We have seen how to do the demodulator in the FSK uh, presentation and here we will progress to see how to decode the data, the received data. Let's talk first about uh, FSK and the objectives of the project. The idea is to uh, demodulate the signal and to uh, obtain the binary data of a remote control. Uh, we will use an FSK uh, remote control uh, where this type of control there are several frequency bands. The most used in Europe are 433.92 MHz and 868.3 MHz. But, the, but there are other bands like 315 or 418 MHz and this all other used in remote controls. You have to get one of the FSK type which mm, usually are used for cars or for high quality door uh, control. Then uh, these uh, the modulators use different type of codifications. The data uh, normally use pulse width modulation or Manchester uh, uh, coding for the data. Let's uh, see first again a review of the AS key and FS key. On AS key remote controls, the signals are transmitted with uh, different amplitudes. The one is a, a signal and the zero is a no signal. This type of controls mainly used for garage and low cost uh, remote controls. Frequency shift keying, it used two frequencies, one for the one and another frequency for the zero. So it has a dual peak spectrum and this type of controls are more expensive although have more range are higher quality and are uh, widely used for cars or automobiles. Here we can see the spectrum of the two signals. The, on the left, here we can see an FS key spectrum, and on the right, we can see the FS key spectrum. With, in first case, there is mainly one peak, clearly distinguished, and the, on the second case, there are two peaks. The controllers transmit a discontinuous signal, the different burst of data uh, with a small delay between bursts. FS key demodulator. The first thing is to search for the frequency of your remote control. First try these two frequencies, 433 and 880, and check if our control is there. Then we make a frequency tuning, an accurate frequency tuning, to center the frequency of this remote control. Some of them are not very stable, but uh, you have to tune by hand, as we saw in the tuning example, the exact frequency of your remote control. Then we have to fit the frequency deviation. Usually they use a narrow band uh, modulation, FM modulation, and the frequency deviation is 1 to 5 kHz. We try to fit, fix this frequency deviation for the uh, maximum output. After the demodulator, we have some filtering parameters, so we have to uh, fit the low pass filter to reduce the noise and to get the best uh, output of for the data. Finally, we in all the process we use the audio demodulation to super to see that is all working correctly and to hear the, the data transmission. Configure your audio uh, the audio decimation factor to obtain a clear demodulation. This is the block diagram of the receiver with the FM demodulator, the low pass filter which is called integrate and dump. I have used 3 kHz for my demodulator and 16 uh, samples as integration uh, period for filtering. Always monitoring with a spectrum analyzer, time scope uh, before and after the filter. And finally, the uh, uh, function to adapt the sampling speed 
from the RTL to the loudspeaker. Here I use a decimation factor of 2. Then we fit the low pass filter to uh, get the better output of the demodulate data. We have to filter to see a square pulse transmitted. Here there are some bars of my remote control filter and this is noise in the middle. The idea is to reduce the noise and to get a clear data output. Then the complex part of the example is the data decoding. This remote control used two type of, uh, of data for the transmission. One type is the pulse width modulation. On this type, each bit is represented with a different duration of the pulse. Here we have a zero, we have a short duration along the bit period, and the one has a long duration along the bit period. Okay? So the codification always uses the same bit period and is changing the time uh, between 1 and 0 inside the period. This pulse width modulation is very efficient because it's very independent of the uh, accuracy of the clock oscillator. Really, we, don't ha we only have to compare the duration of uh, the bits inside one period and there is a strong difference from 128 alpha to 384 alpha. Alpha is the clock period. This is widely used in most remote control use PWM. Other remote controls like also car uh, controls use in this type of Mancher codification. Mancher codification, uh, here the code is a mix of clock signal and data. Uh, there are two types, normal and differential. Uh, we are going to see here only the normal Manchester and on normal Manchester each bit it is represented as the transition between levels from high and low. Uh, the one is called as the transition from uh, high to low and the zero is called as the transition from low to high. Here we have the zero from low to high and here we have the one as a transition from one to zero. So we have several zeros, always with positive transition, one negative transition, again zero positive transition, and two ones, always negative transition. So here we have a continuous string, and this will be a non-return zero code, which is the normal data bit used in anything, and this will be the Manchester a uh, normal Manchester codification which is used by the remote control for transmission. These are real data demodulated for a remote control. I have uh, make a zoom of this signal and here I can demodulate the data where we see the uh, from 1 to 0 transition, this is the 1, 1, 1 and then from 0 to 1 uh, different codes. This is the basi basic uh, codification and we have measured this period duration. This is different for each remote control, there are a small difference. So we have to fit our decoder for each remote control. Uh, also this data has an internal codification in the remote control. So uh, here what we want to obtain is this string of data easily. To process the received data, we are going to use the uh, facility to save data to the work space because the decoding is, it can be done in MATLAB or it can be done in Simulink. Here we have this function uh, which use sim out and save the data to the work space. We have this control menu and this is the name of the variable and we have defined this type of data, format array and save to the signal as to the array. Okay, so 
with this uh, configuration, the received data will be stored in the workspace in MATLAB. So we will have this complete narrowband receiver with all the blocks of the FSKI the modulator and we'll save the data to this block, sim out, and then uh, we can obtain this data in MATLAB. To obtain the data, we can do a plot <coughs> in MATLAB. Uh, first, we choose the data rate of the array to plot. Here, we have chosen from, four ho from 39 to 45,000. This depends on the data recorded. Uh, we start recording data and we uh, capture some uh, data transmission. We stop the recorder and then we have to see all the signal and choose to choose the desired uh, data stream. Of course, this could be done automatically, but as first stage, we propose you to do by hand. Here we have the data stream, and then this will be the string that we will process to obtain the one and the zero uh, string of the, of the received signal. We can do this processing, uh, as I mentioned, using MATLAB and a software algorithm. Sometimes it's better to do this by MATLAB because we, this is a continuous process, so we can process each sample and obtain the bits of the signal perhaps more easily if you are more familiar with MATLAB. And also it can be in simulating, but we have to uh, make a conversion uh, of symbols to bits and then we have to recover the clock and then we have to do a data decoding with logic, logic blocks. So it's uh, more complex perhaps and uh, it requires the use of different blocks and a synchronization, a clock recovery in Simulink. So we could uh, put here a data and the modulation block that will extract the data. And here we obtain the, the output data. Or we can finish in sim out and process it in MATLAB. Let's see how it works. Here we have the complete system and we are going to store some data on the uh, workspace and then we will process this, we will print this data in MATLAB. We have again the same window, we transmit some data. This at now is being stored in the memory. We stop the uh, acquisition and then we go to MATLAB And then we do a plot sim out. And here we have the plot. This is the plot. And here we can see there are data from 30,000 to 70,000. So we can do a better plot from 30 like before. We can do this 39 to 45 and it's more detailed and we can do also another zoom here using this facility. For example, if we want to see this data, it's from 1600 to 2300 and we will process this data to this string to extract the, the data, recovering the sampling period and the bit uh, clock period. So this is the general idea of the final work. You have to uh, record the data, fit all the, uh, the modulator and receiver to your remote control and then uh, or you can process the data in the uh, MATLAB uh, application or you can include, uh, if you are more advanced user, you can include here a demodulation block with clock recovery and uh, uh, data recovery and process all with simulating blocks. 
That's all. Thanks for your attention. Thank you.